G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So I thought with this COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic uh, happening around the world, uh, I was thinking I should do a video about making your own fish food. I thought maybe, you know, it might be a good idea to do, just in case pet shops, uh, aquarium shops around the world, fish shops around the world all close up because they're not a mandatory service. Uh, that might be a good idea to show you guys um, some budget cheap ideas to create your own fish food uh, if those stores do close down uh, while we're in this pandemic. Anyway guys, I've come up with the idea just to uh, buy some white fish, some peeled prawns, um, I'm going to add some veggies in there like um, boiled carrot and boiled peas, I'm going to mash it all up together and try and make some fish food and freeze it and we'll see what the fish think about it. Uh, that will be the real test to see if they do eat it. But all the ingredients all up cost me about $23 uh, Australian dollars. So very cheap uh, fish food, uh, very nutritious, high in protein obviously with the fish and the prawns. Um, and it's got some veggies in there uh, for your vegetarian fish as well. Um, although I wouldn't feed this food to uh, vegetarian only fish such as trophies because they would get bloat. Um, but, you know, this will be an all-round food that uh, you could feed your fish just in case you don't have any other options or even if it does work out and you do enjoy feeding this food to your fish, uh, you can just feed this um, added to their varied diet with other foods, you know, just as a, just as a supplement to those other uh, fish foods that you buy from the aquarium store. Uh, as I said, this is a very cheap way to make um, fish food and you can make a lot of it. Very economical way to uh, sustain and feed your fish in your fish room. All right guys, let's get to it. Okay guys, so here's the white fish that I've got. You wanna pick a white fish because they're generally less oily and f I'm really sorry for the life of me, I can't remember what fish I picked. I just picked something that's white fleshed and the cheapest fish that they had available. Also you can see these prawns, they're peeled. It just saves you the hassle of having to peel them. So that's all I picked from the fish shop. You can pick some scallops as well, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, and the great thing with this is you don't have to use all the prawns or you don't have to use all the fish you buy and you can eat it yourself. I'm just going to cut this up into some chunks now and um, then I'm going to blend it. Now I'm hoping I can blend it. Uh, pretty well because I've only got a stick blender. I don't have a proper food processor But we'll see how that goes. I'll put it in a big bowl so it doesn't get thrown everywhere uh, But I'm going to try and cut this up as much as I can and so the stick blender doesn't have any problems chewing it all up and uh, blending it all together The other thing I'm doing right now is I'm just steaming some peas and some carrot I would have bought some baby food, but I totally forgot about that, but I had some uh, frozen peas in the freezer and some carrot, I'm just spit steaming them now, gonna mash it all together. And yeah, pretty much your imagination is the limit to what you can do with some fish food here. I might even add um, some garlic to it just to entice the fish to eat as well. Garlic is known to really get fish to um, entice fish to eat, especially a finicky fish. The garlic's great to add to uh, your fish food. Don't cook, you do not cook the fish or and the prawns, just leave them raw, the only thing you're gonna cook. Um, if you do do this at home, is the veggies, if you just do decide to add veggies. And then yeah, you could add spirulina powder to this. Your sheets, of the sheets that you get for um, sushi, you can buy them in the supermarket, they come in like sheets of eight or so, sheets of seaweed to make your um, sushi rolls. You can add that into this, this will, that'll be a great supplement for your vegetarian fish, um, zucchini, cauliflower, broccoli. But uh, this fish food is basically for my Tanganyika cichlids. So there's no beef heart, there's no chicken heart, there's no livers, anything like that. I'm sticking to seafood and vegetables for these guys. Your recipe for uh, South American sequence will probably be a little bit different to this. And you can add those chicken livers or uh, beef heart or um, uh, chicken heart to, to the recipe. But yeah, as I said, this is for Tanganyika cichlids. Anyway guys, I'm just going to keep chopping all this up. And uh, uh, once I've got it all cut up nicely, um, I'll blend it together and hopefully I don't make a complete mess of this. Okay guys, the stick blender worked, thankfully. Uh, I recommend you use a, a high dish like this, at least so it captures all the fish as it gets ripped apart by the stick blender. And here's all the fish, the two fillets. I wanted to show you uh, the consistency that I've got here. It's almost, it's, it's very like it's been mashed up. You can see the small particles, the flakiness of it now. This is exactly what I was going for, for my, for, for my fish. If you've got very, very large fish, obviously you don't need to go to this level. So guys, I'm just mashing up more 
the, the prawns a little bit more because I did find some chunky pieces that hadn't been blended yet. So I'm just pushing everything into one kind of mound and then pushing the blender through. You can see the prawns that are blended are coming through the sides, the four holes in the sides of the blender. Okay, so here's our fish and here's the prawns. You can see the consistency of the prawns. So I'm gonna mix that all together with fish and a big bowl. Okay guys, we've got mushy peas on one side and some mashed up carrot that's been, this has both been steamed. Use a fork to mash this up. It's more like a crumb. It's that kind of consistency is what I'm looking for for my fish. But you'll, you'll have to decide with the fish that you've got what size you want to um, get your fish food to. Again, this is for my Tanganyikan fish, Tanganyikan cichlids. So this is, the, this is the, the fineness that I wanted to get, and it's perfect. I've just test fed them some carrot and some of the peas, uh, and they've gone nuts for it, so very promising sign. So I'm just gonna kind of mix this together, not really mash it up together anymore. I uh, just wanna mix it in, and then I'm gonna add it to the fish and the prawns, and then we're gonna add it to individual freezer bags. So uh, I'll freeze it and see how many uh, batches I get out of it, basically. So here's the fish and the prawns. I'm gonna add the peas and the carrots to this. And I'm just gonna mix this through as much as I can, uh, so I can get it pretty even, uh, an even consistency. It's all mixed up as much as I can get it, consistency all the way through. Uh, and you can see, um, seems fairly even. Spoon this into some Ziploc bags. I'm also gonna try and cube it. So I've saved some of these um, containers. This, is, this was a mysa shrimp container. I'm gonna spoon some in here and put it in a Ziploc bag just to see how much easier it is to, um, to you know, scoop them out of this um, and get proper portion sizes rather than just placing them in the Ziploc, Ziploc bags and trying to break uh, pieces free. Okay, so here it goes. I'm gonna try and spoon it onto into these cubes. Now, I didn't end up adding any garlic, basically because I don't have enough for myself. But uh, the point of this project is to make fish food as cheaply as possible. There is also other supplements, I'll call them, that you can add to your fish food. You know, bring out color in certain types of fish. So one of those is paprika. I don't have, again, I don't have any paprika on hand at the moment. Paprika is known to bring out red pigmentation in fish. There's one tray done. Try and get as much air out of the Ziploc bag as you go. Stays fresher for longer. And I'm just gonna lightly tap the bag onto it. So it's not really coming into contact with air. You've kind of got a film over it now. So there we go, that's one. Got three of these. And two lots here, the cubes. This might last me about two to three months, I reckon, with the fish room, considering all the other foods that I have. So I'm just gonna pop out, I've just popped out two cubes. I'll feed some of the fish. I'm gonna put the GoPro on now. We'll see how they behave with this new food. Let's see how the Tanganyikan mixed Tanganyikan tank goes. There we go. Yep. They love it. Seems that like, it spurs them into a feeding frenzy, which just makes all the other fish want to eat as well. This male ventralis, this little hole that he's dug, he doesn't like any of the fish being near his territory as you can see he's chasing all the fish away. This is his part of the tank. Feed some more to the Kawanga golds and trets. Feed it up to the fry at the top now. So these are all my, these are a lot of Lampralogus ocellatus gold fry. Oh, they're picking at it, that's for sure. It's good to see. Lots of nice tiny pieces of fish and prawn in there for them. There's all this carrot. 
I'm really attracted to the carrot because of the colour, I think. And they're tearing it apart right now. Let's try the Neolamprologus brevis. really hope this doesn't pollute the water too much. There we go, yeah, they went for the carrot. Remember slumming the carrot. Adults do. And so did the fry. So there you have it guys, the little recipe I decided to make for my Tanganyikan cichlids. Also just before I uh, wrap this one up, I just want to thank each and every one of my subscribers. I've recently just passed the 300 subscriber mark, I can't believe it, but I really do appreciate all your support, so thanks heaps guys. Um, but yeah, I just thought with this video it might be a good time uh, to just plant the seed, give you guys a bit of an idea of what to do just in case pet shops, aquarium shops in your location are closing down because of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, all is not lost. Uh, just do a little bit of research on what your particular fish like to eat and um, yeah, get out there and, 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 and this is an option, get out there and make uh, something just in case the stores do close down um, or you run out of fish food. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.